Welcome to the Boneyard with Steve Robertson. As always, I am your good friend and host, Steve Robertson. Here on the magnificent Monday edition of the Yard. Hope you're doing well. Man, it's been a great weekend. It really has been. Well, on the sports, it's been a good weekend in sports. Could have been a really good weekend. Could have been a great weekend. We came up just short of making it a great weekend. That said, it was a good weekend on a baseball diamond. A good weekend on the men's side of the uh, basketball court. Women come up just short. But uh, before we get too deep in weeds, let's congratulate Mississippi State softball. Coach Samantha Ricketts and the uh, the ladies there. What a great, great start to the season. And uh, Lady Bulldogs now ranked 18th in the country. How about that? You know, we had such a difficult year last year. And a lot of people, you know, not real bullish about this team. But all of a sudden, you look up, ladies are out there uh, getting it done against some of the nation's elite. Pretty impressive. So congratulations. We'll take a you know just a minute here and talk about this. But um, I did not want to um, you know forget this. But eight and one now, and uh, we start the season eight and zero, oh, and then we lose the ball game uh, over the weekend. But uh, as you guys know, we got off to a good start. You know, taking down uh, UAB and IUPUI, yeah, swept all four of those games. And then we uh, we destroy Louisiana 9-1 and then 2-1, and we go to the Porta Vallarta College Challenge. A lot of bad weather out there, pushed everything back, and so we weren't able to get um, all the games in. However, we take down Clemson, number eight Clemson, 6-3, to three. And then we absolutely embarrass the Utah Utes, 10-2 to two in six innings. And uh, we finally lose our first game of the year uh, yesterday, 2-1 to one to UC Davis. So great start to the season. I know that uh, Coach Ricketts told us uh, when our, our media day that uh, this team had a bit of an edge to them. And that also, too, that she um, she was part of the deal that uh, turned this thing around. You know, she's like, hey. We've put in the work, we like our team, and now we're getting some good results and now nationally recognized. How about that? Congratulations. Uh, Speaking of nationally recognized, too, I want to thank so many of you. Guys, we had such a great weekend at True Rest. You know, we've been open a week as of today, a week. And uh, Saturday, we had 25 floaters. Saturday. It's been a good week. It began to build and build and build. And, of course, if you're looking to come to town this weekend and you're maybe from out of the Golden Triangle area, it's probably smart to go ahead and book ahead of time. We had several Bulldog baseball fans that said, hey, you know, listen, we're going to come in there. We want to float before the game, after the game. We're open 10 to 10, Tuesday through Sunday, and then 4 to 10 on Monday. And so if you live in this area, hey, We can accommodate you whenever, but if you're a weekend traveler to Stark Vegas, you need to plan ahead. You can download the True Rest app, and you can just book online, or or you can call 662-268-7601, my lovely wife will answer the phone, and we'll get you going. And uh, one of the cool things about it, you know, I I float regularly now, but um, for a lot of people, it's a new experience, and everybody leaves happy. Everybody leaves rested. And I was explaining to Dana, I asked her, I said, how how many jobs have you worked at where everybody leaves happy? It's like delivering flowers, except for this is, uh, you know, it's for you. It's not just to look at. You know, it's not just uh, the the euphoric feelings of giving a gift, but uh, we had so many people that are experiencing floating for the first time and uh, having a ball with it. We sold several memberships. Of course, there's a lot of packages available for you. And again, go to TrueRest.com and follow us on Facebook at TrueRest Floats by Starkville. But if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you have anything like that, just call us 662-268-7601. I've got to get in and get some Bulldog Burger Company. Uh, Ani and his family were in town over the weekend uh, to take in opening weekend. It's kind of a tradition around here. And uh, Ian, of course, works at Bulldog Burger Company, so they got some Bulldog Burger Company to go on their way out of town. Because I don't know if you can come to Starkville if, if the visit is complete without a trip to Bulldog Burger Company. I don't know what they ate, but I'm sure that it was divine. It always is. I got to get in there. I may, go, I may swing through today and go uh, pick up some Bulldog Burger Company for the bride 
and uh, bring it up there, and we'll, and we'll eat at the uh, at the spa. But uh, all that I understood, there are three great locations to serve you: University Drive in Start Vegas, Gloucester Street there in Tupelo, Lake Harbor Drive in the Ridge and Flowood area. Have the spring rolls as your appetizer; they'll make you and everybody around you better looking. We all need more of that. And then select one of those fine restaurant quality hamburgers. And you say, you know what, Steve? Hey. Maybe the kids want a burger. Maybe I want to eat a little bit lighter. Get that BLT salad. But the portion is so incredibly substantial. It's difficult to finish it in one sitting. It truly is. I like it grilled. You may like it fried. I'm not judging. I'm from South Mississippi. We put ranch on everything. Uh, But I love going in there and putting my feet under the table at Bulldog Burger Company because I understand exactly what I'm going to get. Great food at a great price, great service, and a great atmosphere. Uh, you can too. Of course, from time to time, we do some tap takeovers, even have some live music in Tupelo. There's a lot going on with Bulldog Burger Company. A great place to eat, a great place to work, a great place for a night out with friends or family. You can have an adult beverage and always get that dessert to go. I'm a big proponent of dessert to go, whether you get the bread pudding, uh, you know, that's up to you, right? But I like that chocolate shake to go to. More times than not, I get the n- Nutella, unless they have like one of those special shakes which they do regularly. You know, remember some years ago, we inspired, or we maybe inspire is not the right word. Maybe we influenced them to do the banana shake. Yeah, for baseball. Remember that? Yeah, super cool. Super cool. Bulldog Burger Company, we've had a great relationship. I love those guys. I love everything about it, man. I know exactly what I'm going to get when I go there. And more times than not, before I even sit down and look at the menu, I already know because I have a craving for Bulldog Burger Company. Have this. The sweet heat chicken sandwich, the sloppy joe sliders. There's so many great things to choose from at Bulldog Burger Company. The place where people go to meet, M-E-A-T. All right, we've got a packed show today, so we'll get right to it. We're not going to you know, kind of belabor the point here because it's a busy time of year, as you guys know. Uh, Mississippi State wins the weekend pretty much as expected. I, I expected us to take two out of three. I was hoping for the sweep. But with so many moving pieces and new names and new roles and new positions and uh, not knowing how some new guys are going to perform, I thought it was going to be a tough deal for us to take all three. That said, we're one pitch away, one strike away from getting the sweep, which that part is encouraging, certainly. We're not going to take any any solace in moral victories. Uh, but Mississippi State played baseball this weekend. Real quickly, let's take a look back at um, – at game one, we're not going to do a play-by-play. We just don't have time for all that stuff with so much to do today. But, uh, you know, it starts out right out of the gate. Air Force gets, uh, you know, gets a run. They push across that run in the first inning. And it's, you know, it's so nuts. This uh, you know, Sam Kulisinga, man, what a great player he is. He entered the weekend with a 55-game on-base streak. He leaves Starkville with that intact, 58. We had a chance to break it. In the Saturday game, they didn't get it done. But, uh, man, that guy's, that guy's a hitter. He is. And they moved him up from the two-hole to lead off. In the very first pitch against Nate, he uh, drives it back up the middle. The next thing you know, you start look, we're looking through all this stuff, and you're like, hey, we're going to be okay? A little first-game jitters. But uh, Nate pitches around the trouble there uh, in the first for the most part, right? I'm sitting here looking at this box score, and um, – it's wrong. Somebody at hellstate.com needs to fix that. But, yeah, yeah Sam Kulisong singles up the middle, and then there's the ground out, moves him to second. So they manufacture the run here. We ate it in a little bit with a wild pitch. We walked Thomas in a pretty quiet weekend for him outside of the one solo shot. And then uh, Jack Bella, who ended up being your Saturday starter, serves as a DH on Friday, drives in Kulisong, makes it a one nothing ball game, and from there, Nate gets out of it. State answers right back. We answer right back, get a couple runs there in the second inning. And it felt like, hey, we're, we're, we're going to get this thing rolling, right? Get on base on a throwing error. And then um, DJ with kind of a swing and bunt there. Next thing you know, a couple guys on. Hines, who struggles with lefties, had a tough weekend against them this weekend. But Bryce Chance comes up, gets the RBI. Logan Kohler comes in, singles through. A lot of people are asking about Logan Kohler. He has separated his shoulder in this ball game. He's out for a little while. It doesn't appear to be anything that's terribly serious. Of course, it's not my shoulder we're talking about. We're talking about his. But um, he's a guy that iced it up. And, of course, they, they said post game that he was in good spirits. And Lamontis came 
directly from the field and then radio to post game. So we didn't have an update. I asked again over the weekend and just said it's just kind of day-to-day. We're just going to see how he responds to treatment. But um, anyway, so State 2-1 lead after one ending of play. And you, if you're like me, I'm thinking, you know, we're, maybe we're going to run over these guys. And you look up in the fourth, the game is tied at 2-2. And Nate's pitching well. He is pitching well. But we're just not able to get things going yet. Took us a while to kind of wake the bats up a little bit. You know, I guess we'll give uh, Andy Canizaro a little credit for, for, for introducing that phrase into our vernacular. I was about ready to run down there and throw them on the ground myself. But, uh, yeah, they get the run there. And it, it's an unearned run because we get, they get a guy on an error there. And uh, Walker Zapp, who I thought was outstanding behind the plate for Air Force, Gets the RBI double here uh, to push them ahead. And then Thomason gets the big fly in the fifth. Again, kind of a quiet weekend for him. But, um, yeah, it worked out. Then they get a couple doubles. Grieving and Stallings both double. And this is when we got a little nervous, guys. This is when we really got a little bit nervous. It's a 4-2 ball game. And despite the fact that we're pitching it well, it never really felt like we were in control this game. Again, the bats go quiet there and um, give Shim a lot of credit. There was a stretch there where you retired seven straight. You know, we didn't get a hit outside of the first inning until we finally, finally, finally got to him. Uh, there in the fifth, just when you guys were about ready to give up, it's uh, the second pitch of the bat. Dakota Jordan hits a tank to center field. And I thought that really created a different vibe in the stadium. Because it felt like this weird thing, like we just couldn't figure this kid out. It's soft toss and lefty. And give Shim a lot of credit. He's a veteran guy. He's a senior. But he was able to keep us off balance, keep us on our, our front foot. We just couldn't barrel him up. And then DJ does, and it's like the air in the stadium changed. It really did. Even though we're still trailing in this ball game, it felt like, okay, it's just kind of a matter of time before we can get to this guy. Finally, in the seventh, stage struck, but it's not against Shim. It's against Moats. Again, it took us a little while to get going here, but um, we nearly got to Moats there in the sixth, his first inning. You know, Aaron Downs gets the double, and uh, we get cup on, but then uh, Larry grounds out to the shortstop. But it felt like even with him in the ball game, even though you're still having to deal with the left-hander, it just kind of felt like, you know, we're going to be okay here. We're going to be okay. And then finally in the seventh, big inning for State. We put three runs up on the board. Another interesting comment I want to make here about this inning. We had had a couple of defensive miscues in the outfield in this ballgame. We had. you know, Bryce had made a mistake. Connor Hyzak had made a mistake. And both of those guys get a measure of redemption here in the seventh. And that's what you want to see. You want to see guys be able to flush a problem and use it as motivation to turn things into positive. DJ walks to open the inning. Hines K swinging, and then Bryce Chance hit a laser that might have got 15 feet off the ground. I mean, it's a bit of a wall scraper, but my goodness. You knew that it was trouble. Didn't know that it was going to get out until it did. And so uh, that's a two-run shot there. Put State up. And then uh, Hyzak with the triple there. Thought that ball might get out. On a warm day, it probably does. Hyzak triples to send in uh, Nate Chester. And from there, State just kind of just took control there. Again, you know, we tack on a couple there in the eighth. I mean, what a great job by the bullpen here. But uh, bottom of eight, you know, cup walks. And what great plate discipline for the freshman having to play in place of Dave Marchand. And Dylan's a legit defender. But three walks for the kid. And he's putting the ball in play all weekend. Cubs take second. Amani Larry doubles. Uh, get a couple guys on there. And, um, you know, we, we push the uh, the run across. A couple runs here and uh, in the bottom of eight and just kind of removed all doubt. I mean, it's difficult to navigate through all this stuff when the numbers aren't right. But uh, looking back at game one, looking back at our numbers here real quickly, from the box score itself, uh, Amani one for five, Dakota two for four. Bryce Chance, three RBI in the ball game, two for five ball game for him. It's always good to see. And, and again, mention you know Dylan Cup. That, that's the thing too. When you got a guy down there at the bottom of the order, even though he's had ninth, that's a that's a guy that's a tough out. 
keeps the lineup moving forward, gives the top of the order more opportunities and chances to kind of hit uh, with pitchers in the stretch and runners on. Uh, Nate Dome, four innings pitch, six hits, uh, two runs. One of them earned four Ks, two walks. One of those was intentional. On the day, we had two walks. Two. And it's, it's a shame that that's something we celebrate, right? I mean, that's what we've endured the last couple of years. It just didn't work out. But 66 pitches, everybody's kind of going about 70. Sierra comes in, goes a couple of innings, gets knocked around a little bit. He was around the zone, faced nine hitters, uh, gave up uh, three hits. Needs a complimentary pitch. Tower Davis came in, and TD was good for us this weekend. Yeah, he earns the win here, works uh, one inning of, uh, of scoreless relief, gives up one hit, punches out two. Just threw 14 pitches, very efficient. We need that kid to be good. You know, we signed him out of VCU, expecting him to come in and be a difference maker for us. And last year he really wasn't. Had some bright moments at times, but consistency was an issue. It's good to see him get off on a good start. And you guys finally got a chance to see Kim Schulke in person. How incredible was that, man? Absolutely legit. Two innings of hitless relief, no walks, a couple punches, face six, retired six, two flyouts, two ground outs. And you could just tell, even those experienced hitters from Air Force, just really had no clue what to do with him. You know, it's just about trying to get the bat on the ball somewhere, but there was nobody barreling anything up. So you win the ball game, one nothing. you feel pretty good. You're thinking, okay, what's that out here on, on Saturday? And let's take the series. And, and here's the deal, too. They don't add up how many series you end at the end, you win at the end of the year. They add up all the games. Every game matters. So we can never be dissatisfied. It's a new year, which often means new resolutions. Many of you have said, you know what? This year I'm going to eat better. I'm going to be more efficient in what I do. I'm going to do my meal prep. We can make that so easy with you with our friends with Factor. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery kits, take the stress out of meal planning, and set you up for success in a new year. Skip all the long lines at grocery stores, all the prep work, the cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from each and every week. They include options like keto or calorie smart, vegan plus, veggie, and so much more. Over 50 weekly add-ons, you've got a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. So skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper. And way more delicious in most cases than takeout. Get chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered to your door. They're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes, which means more time for you to do all the other things you've got planned. Factor has everything I need for a week of flavorful, nutritious eats in addition to ready-to-eat meals. they got cold-pressed juices too, folks. Smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and so much more to keep us energized during the frantic times in life. Head over to factormeals.com slash boneyard50, and that 50 is significant. Use code boneyard50 to get 50% off. That's right. That's code boneyard50 at factormeals.com slash boneyard50 to get 50% off. Make your resolutions count. Bulldog fans, rodeo season is here. That's right, the Dixie National Rodeo. Get ready to roll, man. And uh, I remember being a kid, that was like the biggest highlight for us. My grandmother would get us tickets every year, and me and my brother would wear our cowboy outfits. We'd put our boots on, have our chaps, our vest, and we'd go up there, and just in case one of the cowboys got a little bit scared to get on a horse or a bull, we were willing to do it. Yeah, for sure. Guys, boots aren't just for going out to a country western bar and doing a little boot scooting. Maybe you got a little Texas two-step in your game. Tecovas can make you look better than ever. Absolutely. And here's the deal, too. That's the thing. The versatility of Tecovas is you can wear them somewhere nice or you can live life where you don't go gently. That's what Tecovas does for you. Yeah, it's a rugged, handsome boot. It's my favorite boot brand, and it should be yours, too. Be sure and check them out. Tecovis believes in Western for all people, and you can feel that when you go into their stores, when you walk in, you'll be greeted like family, offered a boot shine and a drink, and maybe even an adult beverage if you prefer, and you can get custom-fitted for a new pair of Tecovis boots. 
You can get custom leather stamping or branding, whatever you need to make it feel somewhat individual. Look up your closest store at tecovis.com. But if you can't make it to a store, Tecovis delivers the most premium quality and most comfortable Western goods right to your door. Visit tecovis.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S.com. And you know what, partner? Point your toes west. Winning a series. That should be the minimum standard to win the series. You know, we got to go out there and try to play for sweeps. And again, we're playing from behind again. Uh, despite the fact that uh, Cal Steven went out there and really, really shoved, uh, r- maybe the highlight of the weekend, and maybe the thing that makes us all feel so much better about kind of moving forward is the way that Cal Steven went out there and pitched. You know what you're going to get with Nate? You do. You feel like you know what you're going to get with Gerangelo, and we'll get to that, l- l- that later. But um, Cal Steven was so consistent in the fall and in the preseason, and then goes out there and puts up you know one of the better pitching performances that we've had in the last few years. Uh, maybe, maybe dating back to the Landon Simmons performance at Tulane when we lost him. A couple games last year, State pitched it really well in the home game against Arizona State. We won 5-1. Of course, the Mayor's Trophy game, we won 2-1. Uh, even the Auburn game, we lost 2-1. We pitched it really well. But uh, Cal Steven really, 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 really acquitted himself well. And, again, you know, as well as he was pitching, you look up there in the third, and you're like, man, how unfortunate is that? You know, Zap just kind of runs under it, man. And uh, Oppo Taco, on the very first pitch, just kind of ambushed the first pitch fastball, puts him up one nothing, And immediately in the bottom of third, State – Answers. That's what good teams do. Sometimes it takes something to get you going. Maybe the impetus was giving up the shot. But Jordan comes out and walks. And Bella was all over the place. I, I, I really thought at times we had a chance to really get to him. And we kind of helped him a little bit. We were a little bit impatient at times at the plate. But to get Jordan to walk and then Hines singles to right, pushes him to second. Uh, chance, Fielder's Choice here, but uh, you got, you know, runners at the corners. They uh, tried to review this and say it was interference. It was silliness. They lose a challenge. They bring in Herbin Street in place of Bello. And I asked Coach Simonis after the ballgame. You know, this is Bryce, bad base running cost us in this ballgame. This was a bit of unfortunate. Bryce just stumbles, just slips, and uh, and he's out. And that would have been significant because the first and third situation, you want to go and you want to take that bag. You want to put them in a decision-making process. But, again, Zap was outstanding for Air Force. He guns us down. And then Hyzak uh, puts the ball in play. Third baseman bobbles. And Thomason really struggled at times defensively this weekend, especially on Sunday. But DJ scores to tie the game. And then Ross comes up. DH and drives one through. Could have been a bigger ending for us, just didn't work out for us. But uh, the game is tied there at 1-1, and you start thinking, okay, this is going to turn into a pitcher's duel. It absolutely does. Uh, both teams put up four consecutive zeros. And then in the eighth inning, you know, Ross Highfield, of course, didn't work behind the plate, but he did a job here. Big, big situation here. Situational hitting hadn't always been a, a strong suit of the last couple of years. This was a great one here. This is a great sequence for Mississippi State. I'll be honest with you, I don't know that I would have sacked Bonded Hyzak, but it worked out for us. But uh, Bryce comes up with a double down the right field line. I mean, just kind of inside out of that thing, man. And, and uh, it was clear that it was down. And so we bunt him to third. Again, I'm not always about that, but it worked out here. We get him to third. Of course, it, you know, at third, there's a number of ways you can score. You can't score from second without the benefit of a hit. And so we get him there, and you start thinking, well, if, at the very least, with less than two outs, let's elevate something and get the run home. And that's exactly what Ross Highfield did. He got, doesn't go out there and try to do too much. We just need a routine fly ball to left, and we'll tag and score. That's exactly what we did. Great job by Rice Highfield. Absolutely amazing job here. That's good baseball right there. And then Nate Chester flies out to right. So it's 2-1 headed to the ninth, man. We just got to close this thing out. And you just start thinking, we got all these guys available to us. Maybe we can. And uh, Colby Holcomb was a little bit shaky in the eighth, but he worked out of it. He gets to the ninth. And here's my first um, second guessing. I got, I, maybe second guessing is the wrong term. I said it in the press box to Mike Nemitz when it happened. 
you get down 2-0 to Spencer here with Holcomb, and you work and work and work, and you eventually walk the kid. I, I'm going to get him right then. I'm not going to give him two. It's a one-run ball game. And, yes, Colby Holcomb's got to learn to pitch in those situations. I get it. But I'm not going to jeopardize the game to teach a lesson here. And then we get behind Thomas and we walk him. And, and of course, you want to be a little careful with him, with Thomas, and you do. Again, I'm okay with giving Holcomb one in the ninth, but not two. Not two. And that costs us. That's a mistake. And there's a lot about this game we can pick apart, right? We didn't hit the baseball. And there were times that's what happens in close ball games. People start thinking, well, I can go be the hero, right? I just said go out there and get a big hit. You know, we get a big fly. We get a solo shot. We take the lead. You know, games like these, when the temperatures are really cool, you got to manufacture runs. Ball's not going to carry out of the ballpark very often. And so you got to go out there and manufacture runs. you got to move runners. And the next thing you know, we're in this situation. You know, we're having to cling to a one-run lead late. And so we bring in Cole Cheatham, who comes in, does a job. Cole's going to be a lefty-lefty matchup guy for us, comes in, does a great job. And, and not, not only does he get the out, it's a non-productive out. Right, it'd be one thing if he if it's just a ground ball to the right side or whatever, you know, deep in the hole and both the runners move, um, you know, or it's a fly ball and a guy tags. But instead, he gets an infield pop up to the shortstop. The infield fly rule was in effect there, but uh, so you get the out and nobody gets to advance. So great job for Cole Cheatham. We bring in Brooks Auger, who immediately gets uh, Eric Joe. Really nice spelling of Eric, by the way, to his parents. Eric Joe. We get him striking out swinging, and it really wasn't a competitive at bat. I mean, it really wasn't. It was a great job by Brooks. And uh, next thing you know, man, we're, we're working this thing. We get a called strike. We get a foul ball. It's an 0-2 count. Let's finish him. Then it's a foul. Then we get to try to get him a chase, and he won't do it. It's a 1-2 count. He fouls another one back, and this kid clearly is battling. And you're thinking, okay, we just need an out, whether it be swinging taking whatever and we couldn't get it he singles through the right side two runs score i'm not exactly sure how we let the second one score it's almost like we were shocked didn't really pay special attention it's just my personal opinion we, we ought to that that ball we, we should have had a chance that a guy out to play at least have a shot and it's like we got kind of caught flat-footed there and uh that ultimately proved to be the difference in the ball game Bottom of nine, we come up. Uh, Joe Powell was catching for us, strikes out swinging, cup strikes out swinging. Larry singles up the middle, and you start thinking, well, here's the situation now. We got our guy Dakota Jordan up here. If anybody's capable of hitting one out in cold weather, it's probably Dakota Jordan or Hunter Hines. And right now you're thinking, hey, even something in the gap with Amani Larry's speed, we got a chance to at least tie the ball game. So we had a chance in the ninth. DJ's hitting against the pitcher in the stretch together, did a great job, and gets a ground ball to second, and uh, that's the ball game. But this is one that we – I won't say we gave it away, but there's so much about this ball game we can learn about this team, right? Now, the good thing is we did some good things situationally. We had some guys come in at the bullpen that did a good job for us. We had some guys that can do a better job for us. But I'm not going to sit here and cry over losing a ball game 3-2 when we won the rest of the weekend. And, yes, I get it. Every game counts. But when I look back at this ball game, nine hits, there's so much I can pick apart about this game. The base running blunders. And there were three of those, and they were all a little bit different, as Lamona said. It didn't boil down to just, you know, that extra walk in the ninth inning. But, when you guys, when you walk three guys in the ninth inning, chances are you're going to lose, especially when it's a one-run ball game. And so for a brief period there, we had a little bit of flashback to last year, not being able to close out a game. And I don't know if you – maybe in hindsight you think, well, you know, maybe you go get Schulke. Maybe. I don't know that, that Cam throws hard enough to hurt himself. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. You know, with all these different arm slots and stuff, I'm sure that, uh, you know, he's got a lot. But I don't know. I, I just begin to ask myself, you know, Going into the ninth, you give the guy one, you don't give him two. That was a bad decision. It, it was. And it burned us. It did. But that's not the only problem with the game. The base running blunders, and I thought at times we had some selfish at-bats. We lose the ball game. They get three runs on four hits and commit one error. We get 
two runs on nine hits. Should have been better. Should have been. And that's the thing you look at for them. I mean, you know, the home run and then the two walks in the ninth. I mean, it's like you just kind of walk into that. It's true. Uh, looking back at the numbers, uh, Amani Larry, nice game for him, three for five. He was the only Bulldog with multiple hits in that ball game. Uh, Dakota Jordan scored uh, scored a run. Bryce Chance scored a run. But we just – we simply should have won this ball game. And you go down, Amani Larry caught Steely and Bryce Chance caught Steely. And both of those were in huge moments. That's the thing. A lot of – you never want to give away base runners – but especially in a tight ball game like this, you had your opportunities. Now, pitching-wise, Cal Stevens, seven innings pitch, three hits, one run. That's the solo shot. Zero walks, 11 strikeouts. That dog, a hunt, had one hit by pitch. And, guys, that's all in 80 innings pitch. And I know some people are like, we should let him finish. Got not February. I mean, you just – I get it. Our season's not going to be defined by a one-run loss to Air Force. Uh, Kobe Holcomb is charged with the loss, goes one inning, allows two runs. Uh, no hits, and that no hits, right? That's the thing. You got to make them hit their way on. Three walks for him. Had one in the egg, two in the ninth. Uh, one punch out. Cole Cheatham again comes into the job, and Brooks Auger comes in, gets a couple, and you know, gives up the one big hit. Just kind of rolled that ball on the right field, but um, you know, kind of is what it is. But we showed up at the ballpark on uh, on Sunday with a chance to win the series. That's exactly what we did. I really thought Gerangelo looked good. I got, I got scared when they had to go out there and check on him, but they said he just slipped and he was fine the rest of the ball game. But, you know, after all we've gone through and after seeing Logan Kohler go down on this kind of a freak thing on Friday, you start thinking, are we cursed? Are we snake bit? No, we weren't. We, we worked out. But I thought Gerangelo was really, really, really good. Uh, so, you know, the scoring opens there in the third. The state puts a couple – Couple runs on the board. Uh, Bryce Chan, it was they helped us here. Okay, defensively, Thomas and just kind of had a meltdown in this ball game. We get Jordan to go in on an error, and then Heisak comes through in singles, and uh, Hines scores. It's two nothing. But you got to be opportunistic when teams give you extra outs. I mean, it's happened to us how many times? Like how many times last two years do we give teams four and five outs? Well, we take advantage of the miscues here. Uh, Eric Joe comes through with a single later to make it a 2-1 ball game there in the fourth. And then uh, Kula Singham, you know, grounds out to third but gets a run home, just does a job. It's a professional hitter there. Ties the game at two. Hunter Hines comes through really the first time we barreled anything up. And give Ben Weber a lot of credit from Air Force. I, I was very, very, very impressed with him and his ability to execute a game plan for Air Force. It was evident I mean, the first time through the, the order, we didn't get the ball out of the infield. We're just beating the ball on the ground. They're getting under barrels. We're topping the baseball. And it's making it easy for the defense to make plays. And that's the thing, too, you got to think about it. I mean, you know, Thomason kind of made Weber feel like some of the, our guys last year. I mean, Tom, you know, Weber's out there rolling up ground balls to third, and Thomason just can't field them or the throws are wild. I don't know what happened. Don't know what happened with him. It's tough. The guy can swing the stick, man, but he struggled defensively big time, especially on Sunday. But, yeah, Weber's doing his job. Thomason didn't, and Mississippi State made him pay for it. Uh, Hunter Hines really barreled one up here, singled that ball to right field. Good to see the big guy turn on one there. Uh, Not the home run, but obviously that kind of gets us the lead back at 3-2. Bryce Chance, infield single there, gets the run in, make it 4-2. And then Nate Chester – uh, everybody moves here on a wild pitch. Chester McKenzie and uh, Jackson McKenzie got his first hit as a Bulldog. Congratulations to he and his family. Bryce Chance scores, make it 5-2. And from this point forward, you just kind of felt like, okay, it, we just need to eat up a couple of innings and put this thing away. Uh, Johnny Long with a big hit, scores two RBI for us, or drives in two runs, makes it 7-2. And at this point, it was just a matter of what the final score was going to be. Dakota with a little bit of a kiss goodbye to the Air Force pitching staff. Absolutely hammered that baseball to left center. And then Connor Heisak comes through again. Uh, ground ball, getting the run home, 10-2. It's a good situational hitting for us on Sunday, I, I thought. And um, But you win the ball game. Uh, Amani's one for five. Dakota, two for four in the ball game. Three runs scored, two RBI. Uh, I had him hitting three hole. 
and so did Lamonis most of the fall, but we moved them up to two. And I know a lot of people that um, a lot of people on our board are like, hey, analytics wise, this makes sense. Uh, Ethan Pulliam got in the ball game. Big Ethan Pulliam fan. Uh, I don't think that Ethan got a fair at bat. That ball hit him. They ruled it a foul ball. They review it. Doesn't matter. Hunter, three for five ball game. And again, after what we saw Friday, Saturday, he really struggled against those lefties. Good to see him uh, barrel some things up. Bryce Chance also two for four. So State scores 10 runs on 12 hits. Real quickly, let's take a look at who's hot. Then we'll look back at uh, the weekend that was and we'll get into our top 10 list. It's a small sample size, okay? As I've said so many times, you never can get too high or too low about an opening ball game or opening weekend. You, you just can't. You got to be smart about that. And you got to kind of understand that things change. That said, and you may have saw my tweet about this, it's pretty nuts, really. I mean, it really is. Looking at last year's numbers, like we. Opening weekend, com- straight up comparison to comparison. In 2023 against VMI, Mississippi State walked 19 hitters, struck out 36, and allowed 15 earned runs. And there were a handful of unearned runs, too. This year, State walks nine, strikes out 38, and allowed seven. So walks are down, strikeouts are up, earned runs are, almost, are, are half of what we did last year. And so the early returns on the Justin Parker system, very good. And again, it's just one weekend, good, bad, or indifferent. That's where we are. Uh, Cal Steven leads the team with a 1.29 ERA. The Bulldogs with a sparkling 2.33 ERA as a team. Uh, Nate Dome, 2.25. And Gerangelo, 2.25. Gerangelo, of course, uh, you know, went out there and pitched mostly right-handed, worked four innings. Everybody's on a pitch count right now. He allowed two hits. Uh, in one run, struck out eight, walked two. Uh, as a staff, it's just incredible the performance that we've seen collectively. There are a few things here and there, you know, we got to fix. But um, and speaking of which, we uh, we got Casey Hunt listed as number two on the roster. Well, Casey's no longer with us. It should be uh, Cam Schulke. Let's take care of that right now. All right, so I have sent the appropriate text to get that corrected. Um, yeah, not a big deal. We're going to take care of uh, But, yeah, I think when you look at what the staff does, the strike throwing is the, the, the issue, right? I mean, how many times last year did we get 0-2 on somebody and then just nip and nip and nip and nip and nip and end up walking them? It's all part of the deal, right? That's an important part of this, throwing strikes. It seems so elementary, but there were times last year that it's like we're scared to get hit. We got guys challenging hitters right now. And being smart about it. You know, you want controlled aggression. But, you know, you start looking at these numbers, man, it, it really, really looks good. Opponents hit 206 against us. We had almost 300 over the weekend. Air Force hit 206. And they got a couple All-American bats in that lineup. And so, uh, happy to see that. Looking at the uh, hitting side, Bryce Chance and uh, Dakota Jordan tied for the team lead, hitting 417. People forget Bryce Chance. We discussed this in our preview of, early, of the season. Bryce Chance led the regulars last year. He just missed some time. He had the highest batting average. Hit, had a higher batting average than Colton Ledbetter last year. Hunter Hines hitting 357, and of course, uh, you know, had had a tough weekend against the left-handers, but really rebounds a little bit on Sunday. Imani Larry hitting 333. Nate Chester uh, playing solid relief in uh, Logan Kohler's absence, also hitting 333. Uh, so it's good to see. It's good to see, for sure. Absolutely good to see. Real quickly, we'll look around the scores from the Southeastern Conference over the weekend in case you missed it. Uh, Vanderbilt, really, 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 really surprising result. They get the win on Friday, uh, 12 to 11. Had to come from behind. 15 hits in the ball game, but uh, they beat FAU 12 to 11. K- and Kentucky gets off on the, the right foot. 11-7 winners, but, uh, man, a ton of hits given up uh, in that ball game. LSU gets uh, VMI 11-8. Thatcher Hurd did not go deep in that ball game. Georgia 11-2 winners over UNC Asheville. Arkansas, a bit of a tussle. Hagen Smith did not look good. Do what, 43 pitches in the first inning. And uh, they had to pull him. 
they come back to win six to four. They had a three run jack that kind of got them going again. But uh, Arkansas, bit of a challenge there. South Carolina five one winners over Miami of Ohio. Cal Poly goes to Como. Excuse me. They get them in San Luis Obispo. Could you imagine playing baseball in Missouri this time of year? Uh, but Cal Poly with a 3-2 win, and, of course, State wins 8-4. Alabama shuts out, out the Jaspers of Manhattan 4-0. St. John's goes down to Gainesville, Florida, and upsets Florida 9-5. A&M 15 at the winners over McNeese State. This allowed two hits. Auburn 17-6 winners over Eastern Kentucky. Uh, Tennessee playing out in Arlington at the uh, Shriners Children's College Showdown. 6-2 winners over Texas Tech. Missouri comes back in the doubleheader out there and beats Cal Poly 3-1 to even a record at 1-1. Ole Miss in a tussle wins in 13 innings, 5-4. to And we talk about, uh, you know, State being a pitch away from getting a sweep. Ole Miss a pitch away from losing the series, a four-game series out there. They split with Hawaii. A little more on that later. Twitter's fun. It is. All right, Saturday's games – uh, they cancel the St. John's Florida game, and then South Carolina 11-4 winners over Miami, Ohio, and then Missouri 12-8 winners over Cal Poly, Kentucky 3-0 winners over SC Upstate. Much better pitch ball game, 11 hits combined. South Carolina Upstate commits four errors in the ball game, and all of them costly. LSU 2-0 winners over Central Arkansas, and it's so weird how LSU won this weekend. Some low-scoring games. Some high-scoring games. Games yesterday like a church league softball game. Auburn, 6-1 winners over Eastern Kentucky. A&M, 12-2 winners over McNeese. And then FAU in Nashville, they get the 5-4 win. And what's crazy, it, it could have and probably should have been worse. FAU, the Owls, 10 hits in the ball game and commit two errors to extend some innings. Vanderbilt scores four runs on just three hits. I'm not sold on Vanderbilt, and a lot of other people are. I'm not. Alabama 15 nothing winners over the Jaspers of Manhattan. A one-hit performance from Alabama pitching there. Georgia 17-5 winners over UNC Asheville. Arkansas 15-5 winners over James Madison. You think, okay, they're going good. Of course, uh, Air Force gets stayed 3-2. Ole Miss, nip and tuck again, 5-2 winners over Hawaii. And then Oklahoma beats Tennessee in 10 innings. That was a 1-1 ball game. Oklahoma breaks it open there in the top half of the uh, 10th to win. Second half, a doubleheader for Ole Miss. They get beat 18-2. to two. The Ole Miss offense managed just three hits. And Hawaii's throwing a lot of young guys getting their first D1 innings. But, uh, man, pitching a real, real challenge for Ole Miss over the weekend. And we'll look at Sunday's games real quickly here. Uh, St. John's in Florida, it's canceled. Missouri's game with Cal Poly canceled. Kentucky 9-3 winners over SC Upstate. Georgia completes the sweep 10-0 over UNC Asheville. South Carolina had five pitchers combined to throw a no-hitter against Miami, Ohio. 14-0 in that ball game. A&M 10-0 winners over McNeese. Cowboys not much of a threat. LSU beats VMI 27-5. Remember that was a 2-0 ball game over Central Arkansas? 27-5. Tough, tough, tough. And of course, State wins 10-2. Alabama completes a sweep 11 to 8 winners over Manhattan. Manhattan finally got some got some hits there. Got some some runs on the board. Auburn, 9-1 winners over Eastern Kentucky. And then James Madison gets Arkansas 7-3. And again, it's it's opening weekend. But my goodness, you know, I, I expect Arkansas to be a dominant team, and I suspect they will be, but um, nearly lose the series. Vanderbilt bounces back 11-1 winners over FAU to win their series. Uh, Ole Miss gets beat last night 13-4. Uh, last two ball games, Ole Miss pitchings allowed 31 runs. Woof. Woof. Tennessee gets Baylor 11-5. So, real quickly, we'll look at the standings. I guess before we do that, we'll look at the, there's a handful of games being played today. You know, our friends at Air Force headed down to Hattiesburg to play Southern Miss. Arkansas and James Madison are already underway right now. LSU and Central Arkansas will play uh, this afternoon. And uh, the, game, the game between Missouri and Cal Poly is, uh, is canceled. A lot of cancellations this weekend. I, don't, I never like that stuff. I don't know how you feel about it. I want to play ball. All right, SEC East, 
Georgia, Kentucky, South Carolina, all 3-0. Missouri, Vanderbilt, and Tennessee, all 2-1. Florida just gets the one game in, and they lose. Uh, they're 0-1. Auburn, 3-0. LSU, A&M, Alabama, all 3-0. Arkansas, Mississippi State, 2-1 on the weekend. Ole Miss, of course, the first team in the conference to lose two games. Uh, they're 2-2. Two and two. And, again, a pitch away from uh, being 1-3. and three. But, hey, they made the pitch. They made the hit. They won the ball game. Uh, looking ahead to midweek, before we get together again, there, w- there will be some ball games played. Of course, uh, we're going to play here at Mississippi State uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. So Wednesday show, we'll break down Tuesday and we'll preview Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday night, Georgia's at Georgia State, Moorhead State's at Kentucky, Winthrop's at South Carolina, UNC Asheville's at Tennessee, Incarnate Word is at A&M, Austin P. of course, at Mississippi State, Middle Tennessee at Alabama, Dayton at Vanderbilt, and then Florida's at North Florida, UAB is at Auburn. Weird things tend to happen in the midweek, especially this time of year, because you're uh, still kind of figuring out, you know, who you're gonna who you're gonna be able to trust, that sort of stuff. But uh, a lot of college baseball here over the course of the next couple of games, couple of days. Pardon me. I uh, look forward to being back with you on Wednesday, and we'll uh, we'll knock through that. All right, time for today's top ten list is always brought to you by CloseWithBlair.com. That's C-L-O-S-E with Blair, B-L-A-I-R. Uh, Blair Chandler is my friend, your friend, our collective friend in the mortgage industry. 23 years of experience, recently made the move to Priority One Mortgage. The same level of service went with him. Give Blair a text or call today at 601-500-2344. Again, at 601-500-2344. And uh, he can get you to the closing table. And, and that's one thing that uh, Blair reminded me of some things over the weekend. Uh, you know, Blair is a guy that keeps up with a lot of stuff. You know, Blair's a guy that always kind of lets you know what's happening, you know, what's going on, who's got this going, and how do we feel, what's the latest in the mortgage industry. And uh, that's always very, 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 very interesting to me because I'm not in that industry. And it's nice to have somebody that keeps up with stuff. And uh, Blair reminds me of this, and I wanted to share this with you. Game day condos, right? So you got your primary residence taken care of, and maybe you want to have a place here. A lot of you guys do. But there's game day condominiums available for purchase here. And Blair and the whole Chandler group, they can take care of everything for you. They can take care of everything. Simple as that. They can absolutely take care of everything, uh, whether it be the real estate piece or whatever. Get a hold of Blair. Uh, and then he's licensed in all 50 states. License in all 50 states. So that's the deal. All right. So let's work on all that stuff. Let's look at buying a home, perhaps buying a second home. And it doesn't matter where you live or where you work. We can get all that stuff handled for you. And again, that's Blair Chandler with CloseWithBlair.com. All right. And so with Ole Miss losing, it kind of struck me this morning, when, is, when are we ever going to have a chance to celebrate the music of Hawaii? Now, I'm not going to do just traditional Hawaiian stuff. There is some of that. I did have Don Ho's Tiny Bubbles listed on our list. We made a change. I was convinced by some people in the family that I I was making a glaring omission. So tip of the cap to Don Ho's Tiny Bubbles. Uh, Said it was his signature song, and at times he said he hated the song after he'd sung it thousands of times. All right. So we're going to celebrate bands and or musicians from the islands of Hawaii, right? This is not necessarily a shot at Ole Miss, even though we, we're always prompt to take one. But when else are we going to be able to talk about this great state? And uh, some, some big hits, too. All right, so John Guerin is a guy that was a studio musician, played with the birds. Man, this guy had worked with everybody and was even part of uh, Joni Mitchell's touring band for a while. They ended up having a relationship. She wrote a song about him called Hajira. On the album, Hajira, after uh, she ended the relationship. And so while John didn't participate in that recording, he did inspire it. And a tip of the cap to John, man, that guy worked with so many different people. He's a studio musician out in Hollywood. Incredible career. That's your number 10 song. All right, number nine, uh, Nicole Scherzinger from uh, the Pussycat Dolls. I didn't know this. Man, did you know the Pussycat Dolls sold over 55 million records? Did you know that? I didn't. We're going to go with the great song, Buttons, because they were a little more of an R&B kind of dance group. Uh, Nicole, obviously, easy to look at, too. Also very, very talented. All right, number eight, going back to our Saturday Night Fever days, it's Yvonne Eileman. 
Did you know she was from Hawaii? If I can't have you, I don't want nobody, baby. Yeah, that's right. A native of the islands of Hawaii. All right, number seven, Jack Johnson, a guy that, uh, I mean, if you don't know Jack Johnson, he's very involved with the surf culture. He's a native Hawaiian and uh, has sold tons of records, tons of records. And uh, probably the thing that, you know, when you go back and you begin to look at his career, and he, I mean, he's done like the Curious George soundtrack, all kind of crazy stuff like that. It's pretty interesting. But uh, Jack Johnson kind of broke through years ago. Uh, his uh, breakthrough album, In Between Dreams, is, is kind of known to be a big one for him too. But um, I went all the way back to the beginning. And I listened to a lot of this stuff. From the Brushfire Fairy Tales album, it's the song Flake. Flake, that's your number seven song. Number six, taking us back to Gavin Collins. Gavin Collins, of course, uh, Bulldog catcher and then third baseman, was part of that 2016 SEC championship team. And he brought Iration to Duty Noble Field. His walkout song was a great song called Reeling, which I still listen to from time to time. Iration Reeling is number six. Number five, did you know Bette Midler was from Hawaii? I bet you didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Of course, Bette Midler, best known for her role on Seinfeld when she was the star of the uh, Broadway hit musical Rochelle Rochelle. And her and Kramer had uh, a unique friendship. But uh, back in the beginning with Bette Midler, of course, she's really better known for, you know, her Broadway shows. But uh, The Rose, that was the, the first really breakthrough, and Bette Midler kind of broke free. That, that song plays at the closing credits of that movie. I remember watching that as a kid. Your number five trong, song, Bette Midler's The Rose. Number four, it's uh, Glenn Medeiros. Now, you may recall Glenn broke through with the great song, Nothing's Gonna Change My Love For You. That was big. It was. Glenn also, at the time, was like a teacher and a vice principal when his music career took off. Next thing you know, he's collaborating with Bobby Brown on your number four track, She Ain't Worth It. The girl's jazzy, but she's nothing but trouble. She ain't worth it. All right, number three. You may not have known this one either. I didn't until today. I was today years old when I found this out. Mike Starr, bass player from Alice in Chains, is from Hawaii. Or was. God rest his soul. Uh, so we're going to go with Bleed the Freak from Alice in Chains. Anytime we can work that in, it's a good one. It's a great track. I love that song. Number two, it's Bruno Mars. Maybe you knew he was from Hawaii, an absolute musical genius, and we're going to go with Locked Out of Heaven as our number two track today. Number one track, though, and uh, I wanted to go in a different direction. And I was overruled by the family, and I said, you know what? You talked me into it. In honor of our friends from Oxford and their weekend in Hawaii, I'm sure it was fun. I'm sure it was great. It's somewhere over the rainbow. And uh, I don't even care which version you use, whether it be the Julie Garland one. And that was written for the movie Wizard of Oz. Uh, so congratulations to the rainbows uh, for a good weekend. And, I, again, I hate it that I came up a bit short of uh, winning the series. But uh, that's the celebration of our music from Hawaii. And uh, I, we've got some friends that live out there. We do. We do. We do. Got some Bulldogs out there, too. And uh, appreciate everybody support of the top ten list. If you have uh, ideas for top ten, reach out let us know. Best way to do that is on social media. You can hit up Roy at Dogmatic67 on Twitter. You can find our great list on Spotify. You send them to me, I'm going to screenshot them and get them to Roy. But for some reason, I don't always see those notifications, so I apologize for that. I am a busy guy. But uh, we do want to get those for you. But, again, I thought we would call an audible today and, again, celebrate the music of Hawaii uh, and really celebrate the rainbows for sure. Great weekend for uh, rainbow baseball. All right, next segment of the show brought to you by Campus Bookmart, a Stark Villian institution. Man, I love Campus Bookmart. I do. I love going in there. I w I'll be honest with you. I wish I was rich. I just buy everything in there. I can't have enough Mississippi State merchandise around me. I, I can't. I don't know how you guys feel, but uh, I absolutely love it. We have an opportunity to get Mississippi State merch. That, that's the best gift for a Mississippi State fan. It just is. So treat yourself and maybe those you love with some new Mississippi State merchandise from Campus Bookmark. Go by and see their smiling faces. If for some reason you can't make it to town, perhaps it's just so difficult to get back to Starkville as I'm putting some things away. 
Uh, visit them on the World Wide Web at campusbookmart.net. They're, they're absolutely stocked with new baseball merch. Whether it be hoodies and you need them this time of year or T-shirts, we want to rep the brand. Also, men's basketball, women's basketball, trending towards the postseason. So pick up some sports-specific gear from Campus Bookmark. By using their website, we'll save you a little money. It's true. It's campusbookmark.net, promo code BSR, which stands for Beautiful Steve Roberts, and that gets you free shipping on all orders over 75 bucks. Any order less than 75 bones, absolutely incomplete. Again, that's campusbookmark.net. All right, let's take a look at some men's basketball. Big win. Listen, I get it. Arkansas wasn't a great team, and uh, we didn't play exceptionally well in the game, but we won. And as one of the young student assistants in, uh, in the press box told me, that's the only stat that matters is that we won. Bulldogs now 17-8 and eight and 6-6 six and six in the conference. You start looking ahead here. We, we've got to make hay while the sun is shining, and that's why that Arkansas game was so incredibly important to us. We couldn't allow an Arkansas team that is underperformed to come into duty, you know, excuse me, Humphrey Coliseum. I got baseball in the brain. And, uh, and shut us down. So here's the deal. 71 67 winners and uh, it just kind of felt like you know the whole way through it felt kind of weird you know it did but late in the game the better team stood up and made plays it's as simple as that and we talked about it on the preview this arkansas team was talented enough to beat us just because they've underperformed at some point you think they're going to wake up i won't be surprised if they get in the sec tournament and upset somebody but with 12.27 to go, excuse me, just under 12 minutes to go, we're down two. 48-46. And you, it kind of felt like, you know what, this is just one of those weird games. We just got to find a way, right? And when, that, when you get that weird feeling in the air, when crazy stuff is happening, you start thinking, you just got to find a way to survive. And that's what the Bulldogs did. But we could never really get separation from them. Five minutes to play, we're only up two. We miss a three-point basket. Next thing you know, it's a tie ball game again at 342. And it starts to feel like, you know what? We're about to drop a game we shouldn't. Josh Hubbard steps up and knocks down a pair of free throws. Gives us a two-point lead. And then Makai Mitchell gets loose and ties the game. And then Arkansas again just before Cam Matthews tied it, they had a two-point lead. So it's 63 all with two minutes to play, and you just felt like we needed to get a stop somewhere. We needed something good to happen. A pair of free throws by L. Ellis pushes them up too, but then Josh Hubbard, what an incredible freshman he's proved to be for us, goes down and ties the game. With a minute to play, guys, Arkansas has got a two-point lead, and Josh Hubbard says, nope, not today. Again, Hubbard kind of carrying us down the stretch. Goes down and drills a three-point basket to put State up a point. And then from there, we get the big defensive stop. Get the big stop there. Tolu with the block. They foul Cam. And then we miss free throws. And how many times have we gone through this? Several. And it's been our undoing at times. But fortunately, we're able to make some things happen. And then Cam gets a great defensive rebound here. Guys, it's just one of those things you start working through. Again, late in ball games, your veteran players have to step up. We ended up getting the ball turned over, and again, it's just nuts. And then Shaquille Moore gets the steal. They foul us. We make two free throws, make it a, a three-point ball game with seven seconds to play. And um, ultimately, hang on here. Of course, we, we foul them, and you always foul up three. Right? You, you do. I know a lot of people are like, Steve, but no, no. no. Because then, you know, you only need one heave. Right, but if you foul them, then the best they got to make two plays, really three plays. They got to make the free throw and then get a get an offensive rebound and put the ball back up. And so, good strategy here by Jans down the stretch. They foul us, and Cam makes one of the free throws, and we win by four. And it just felt like it wasn't our night. That's how it felt. But we found a way to win the game. Period. That's all that really matters. Uh, Khalif battled a really good game for Arkansas, 18 points for him. Uh, Makai Mitchell comes off the bench with 21. And those two guys pretty much carried him. It was kind of back committee, but those two, 
39 of their 67 points. Three of 17 from beyond the arc. That's huge. We talk about that all the time with the Chris Jans defense. Hey, we're kind of content for you to take that low percentage shot. We just want to kind of get a hand in your face and lower the probability of you making it. But 14 of 19 from the line, and that, that, was, a, that was a factor. It absolutely was a factor for us. We're 19 of 32. You know, again, you make a few free throws, this game is probably not close. And Josh, for a long time, kind of struggled. He got hot late, but he's just 6 of 18 from, from the floor and 3 of 10 from beyond the arc. He's a volume shooter, leads us with 19 points, and none bigger than that big three. It just really felt like things were kind of getting away from us. We needed a momentum-making basket, and we get it. Cam Matthews, big game for him, 17 points, uh, 6 of 7 from the floor, and just kind of doing yeoman's work down there, pulling down 10 rebounds to lead the team. We had 42 uh, rebounds on the day. Keyshawn Murphy, just 4 points. We need we need a little more bench production. You know, we can't just depend on, on the starters to carry us, but not a ton of bench production contribution not not a ton we got some good defensive play at times but uh just 11 points off the bench but uh, again a weird game that mississippi state found a way to win and at the end of the day that's all that matters and that's not going to be a game it's going to go down in anybody's memory it's one of their favorite days in humphrey coliseum and uh, we had a sellout crowd but i'll be honest with you and i've seen some people talk about this and, and i want to address this just a little bit the first thing I'm going to say is nobody can tell you how to live your life other than your parents, and then when you become parents, then your kids. But do you understand my point? You spend your time and your money how you want to spend it. But when we sell out all those tickets, we need, to, we need a capacity crowd. We really do. We really need people to turn out. Uh, listen, we scheduled it so you guys could do both. We scheduled it so you could go to the men's basketball game and come to baseball. You didn't have to pick or choose, but many of you did. Uh, I'm not going to judge you for that. It's your life. It's your time. It's your money. Uh, but I, I, one of the things I'm not really going to stand for is like people shaming other people about, well, hey, you, we had a big discussion about that yesterday uh, on the Jeans Page message board. It's what, you know, one of our, our basketball first people was like, hey, I really, you know, he could have said it in a nicer way. We called some people crappy fans, whatever, for not coming to basketball. Uh, when you can make it, we, we certainly need you to be there. But we're not going to sit there and have these discussions. There are some people, their favorite sport's baseball. They've been waiting to get back at Duty Noble Field, and they had tickets that didn't go. And there were other people that had tickets and stood in line for a half they're not going to get. That's a different story for a different day. But love what you love. But at the end of the day, let's all love Mississippi State and uh, try to love each other. And if we can't, let's at least tolerate each other. Because we all want the same things. That's important to understand. Very important to understand. We all want the same things. Now, you're going to have a chance to double dip again on Wednesday. You, you got to play hooky from work. You know, because Austin P's baseball games are Tuesday and Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Ball game probably over around 6.30, 7 o'clock. And you walk over to Humphrey Coliseum and watch the Bulldogs take on the Ole Miss Rebels. And we're going to preview that game on Wednesday show. Uh, but, uh, again, you don't have to pick and choose. But if you do, you shouldn't have to be made to feel bad about it. That's how I feel about it. You know, you, you go and love what you love. And don't apologize for that. If you are a, There are some of our fans that are huge men's basketball fans. Huge. There's nothing more important to them. And you know what? That is perfectly okay. And I absolutely support them. We need people like that. We need some people that are like, hey, I'm going to be in Humphrey Coliseum no matter what. I'm going to go to road games because I love men's basketball, and I want Mississippi State men's basketball uh, to be a very successful program. So I'm going to pledge my support, my financial contribution to Mississippi State men's basketball first, and God bless you for it. Absolutely. And there's a lot of other people, though, that see baseball the same way, and it's completely okay. You don't have to pick and choose. We can support all the Bulldogs. We do on this show. You know, we're just to talk about women's basketball. You know, we – we, we led the show talking about softball. We can support everybody. We can. It's okay. You know, you don't have to say, hey, well, you guys are bad fans because you didn't come to basketball. I mean, how many years have we had that conversation? And now we got people throwing their money behind men's basketball. We got people that are doing, contr contributing to NIL significantly for men's basketball. We got people that are buying tickets. You know, we want th those seats filled. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But it wasn't too terribly long ago we couldn't get people to come to a ball game. 
period. And there, for some reason, there are some people out there that are men's basketball-centric that just absolutely despise baseball, and I don't get it. Look, our fans are so dumb. It's a non-conference game. It doesn't matter. Live your life how you want to live your life and allow other people to do the same. You know, I, I think it was a, an absolute farce in the late 80s when they quit playing all the hair metal. I couldn't believe it. It's like, this isn't fair. And then all of a sudden, they're shoving all this folk music in my face and telling me I should like that. I, it's all the more reason I'm not going to like it because you tell me I have to, right? It's kind of the same thing with this. You know, you don't have to pick and choose. But if you do, it's okay. It's okay. You just don't, you don't get to pick and choose and then shame the people that pick differently from you. That's just not how life works. It isn't. So I'm, I'm going to support all the Bulldogs. Men's golf, women's golf, tennis, everything. I am always, always, always supportive of all of our student athletes that represent our fine university. Period. That's how I feel. And I hope, I hope that I am in the overwhelming majority. Uh, I am. I, 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 I believe that. I mean, I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen so many of you that made that trip to Columbus, Ohio, to watch our women's basketball team compete for a national championship. I was there. I was there in Dallas, and we beat UConn. And there were so many of you there that really kind of converted the rest of that arena to pull against UConn, right? I was there to see it. You know, we, we had the Super Regional in softball a couple of years ago, and it didn't have room for everybody. Yeah, I mean, it's like our fan base gets a bad rap at times, and so let's not work against each other. I mean, honestly, let's just kind of support each other. And you know what? If you don't want to come to baseball, don't come to baseball. If you don't want to go to men's basketball, that's your decision too. But at the end of the day, love what you love, support what you want to support. Uh, we're grateful that you're a part of the Mississippi State uh, family in every aspect, for sure. That's how I feel. Maybe you feel differently. Final segment of the show brought to you by the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. If you're looking to come to Starkville and bring a large group, look no further than the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. It's the best place to stay. Rather than go out there and get like a block of hotel rooms, which is just a waste of money. I mean, let's just kind of call it for what it is. When you've got a house like the Stark Vegas Clubhouse available to you, it's more affordable. It's going to be more comfortable. It's a house, right? And it's uh, been completely renovated. The huge back porch area, the fire pit, the wet bar, the five bedrooms. It's great. So whether you're bringing your family and you're going to stay here all weekend and maybe take in some baseball, some softball, some men's and women's basketball, what a better place to stay just five minutes from the university campus. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Right there off 182. It's incredible. I love going out there. I had some friends that stayed there. They were very pleased with it. And uh, you would be too. And uh, so Google Stark Vegas Clubhouse and their Facebook page will populate. And you can look through all the pictures and see all the amenities that are available to you. It's private. It's quiet. It's great. You can have your communal areas, but also have your own quarters to retreat to at night. And so if, you, if you're bringing a work group to town, this is, there's no better place. Because, you know, you could book a hotel room. Next thing you know, you got to find a conference room where everybody can sit. And all of a sudden, you got your laptop propped up on on the bed, nobody can see, there's a glare. Guys, save yourself all that inconvenience and book the Stark Vegas Clubhouse through the Evolve website. When you Google, you'll have the option to go through Airbnb or VRBO. That's completely your decision. But if you go through Evolve, I can save you a little money. Use promo code BSR10. That gets you 10% off your stay at the Stark Vegas Clubhouse. Absolutely phenomenal place to stay. All right, unfortunately, the women came up just short yesterday. It was a different game after Jessica Carter got, got uh, fouled out. And, you know, she's not 100%, but, man, she went out there. She was a gamer, did her best, uh, able to catch that. As soon as we got done with post game, we put the game on, uh, kind of kept up with that. And uh, all of you Bulldog fans, it turned out that you were part of that. Thank you for going, and thank you for supporting our ladies. Uh, you guys probably earned some points in heaven for that because uh, we're God's people, you know. But, uh, man, we had our chances. We did. And uh, give Ole Miss credit down the stretch. They made the big shots, and we weren't able to make the big defensive play. And we were a different team without Jessica Carter on the floor. But, man, we got down big in this ball game, And, uh, you know, you close the quarter, and it's a 22-18 game. We're just down four. And it's nip and tuck the whole second quarter, but it's a six-point advantage. That third period, the big one for Mississippi State. A nine-point advantage, 22-11. And so we get we get to this fourth quarter, the decisive fourth quarter, and it really felt like, you know, State was the stronger team. 
It's just one of those things you, you begin to kind of work through. You don't get these opportunities very often. You don't. State pushes to lead out to eight points after a pair of Aaron Barnum free throws. And, and I, right, right here I'm thinking, okay, we're good. We're good. We're, we're going we're gonna to go shock them. It's going to be fun for our fans on Twitter as they begin to poke, fans at, uh, poke fun at their fans and that sort of stuff. Uh, but give Madison Scott a lot of credit. She was big for Ole Miss down the stretch. Knocked down a couple big free throws. Jessica Carter with a jumper takes it back out to eight. And then you look up, you know, midway through this quarter, it's a four-point game just under four minutes, even after the Madison Scott layup. We're thinking, okay, we just got to hang on. Maybe we make a shot here, just get a defensive stop. We had some trouble doing that. We went a long time without scoring. And uh, Ole Miss, again, Madison Scott just kind of leading them back, uh, makes it a four-point game. We're there in three minutes to play. And even then, I thought, hey, we're going to be okay. Darian Rodgers tries to dial up the dagger, and we miss the three-point basket. However, we get the offensive rebound and then turn it over. We get it back. Jessica Carter gets a steal. Minute 30 to play, you're thinking, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. No, and then Ja'Kayla Jordan, a chance really, if she makes this basket, it's probably a different conversation today. They get a rebound, and then Markeisha Davis just absolutely rolls down the floor like her hair was on fire. Incredible play there. Cuts it to a two-point game. And, again, it's who, – who is it again? Late? Who else, if you're all Miss, do you want to have the ball in their hands late? It's Madison Scott. And, again, if you make that jumper, Darian Rodgers, try, again, trying to put the game away, ends up being a deflection. Markeisha Davis gets a rebound. They get it to Madison Scott. And uh, we just couldn't get a stop. We get a chance late. You know, we call timeout, move the ball forward, and uh, Jaquela Jordan, a chance uh, for glory, misses the jumper. And we go to overtime. And, of course, Jessica Carter is fouled out. And it felt like, you know what, we're just in bad trouble. But all of a sudden, you look up after two possessions, Aaron Barnum just trying to lead the Bulldogs here. We're up four. Despite it all, we're back up four. And then a couple of crazy things happened. Like Ole Miss got a couple of shots to fall that just, you know, it just kind of made it feel like it was their day. And they tied the game at a minute 46, and they have the end one. They have a one-point lead, and we need to go down and make a play here. But instead, Ole Miss gets the stop and a basket at the other end to put themselves up three. We have a chance to go down again. Lauren Park Lane drives the lane. Nothing there. And then we end up fouling. And uh, from there, it's pretty much academic. So not a game that, you know, we wanted to win, but when we first, we've talked about this now for two weeks, probably the most difficult game for us down the stretch. Because as much as our fans don't like Ole Miss, you have to credit them that they have played really well, especially as of late. Uh, so we take the L there. Now we're 20 and 7 overall, 7 and 5 in a conference. We've lost two games in a row. Not a great week. We were in position uh, to finish fourth in the conference, and now we've made life very, very interesting on ourselves. Let's just kind of look ahead to what's left. Thursday, we back in Humphrey Coliseum for the return match against Kentucky. Uh, you know, Kentucky obviously gave us all we wanted and then some. We were fortunate to win that game, but to give our ladies a lot of credit, if they refused to die, refused to lose. A couple big threes late in that ball game. And then on Sunday, we traveled to Tuscaloosa. So if you're not at baseball, we certainly expect you to make that trip over to Tuscaloosa. I know we got some fans that will opt for that. For sure. And we, uh, we love all of you that go to these road basketball games to support our Bulldogs. And so, challenging week in many respects. I mean, Kentucky, again, the matchup and the vibe up there is just kind of weird. But we should be able to get them here. And then we go to Alabama. And Alabama playing really well as of late. Uh, took care of Auburn over the weekend. And speaking of Auburn, we head there next Thursday and then close it out March 3rd with Senior Day against Missouri. So, again, a favorable schedule. Mississippi State is capable of winning all four of these games. Now, when we do it, that kind of remains to be seen. But we're certainly capable uh, of winning these four games. You know, kind of looking here, uh, you know, kind of the weekend it was or whatever, you know, look at the standings. You know, we're, again, we've made life a little more complicated, shall we say, for ourselves. I think that's a fair characterization. Because now all of a sudden Alabama – right there with us, right there with us, kind of competing. And we're both a game back of Ole Miss. 
South Carolina still 25 and 0 overall, 12 and 0 in a conference. LSU 8 and 3, and now a game up on Tennessee for second place in the SEC. I think beginning of the year, that's probably how we picked it, right? South Carolina, LSU, and Tennessee is the top three teams in this league. Well, here we are with two weeks to play, and, and that's exactly how it's played out. Ole Miss, Alabama, Mississippi State all kind of bunching there together. Ole Miss with the game leads we discussed. But State, can, can, in many respects, kind of controls their own destiny uh, when it comes to this. We just got to win these ball games and hope that uh, – you know, Ole Miss can drop a game and we can get to that four seed. But, uh, you know, again, we're a tournament team. Arkansas is now 6-6, six and six, Vanderbilt 6-7, six and seven, A&M 5-6, Auburn 5-7, Florida 4-8, and eight, Kentucky 3-9, and nine, Missouri 2-10, and 10, Georgia 2-10. and 10. So, again, looking, you know, two of the last games here, uh, both at home, the two remaining home games are the 12th and 13th team in the league. And you, I don't know if you saw – Georgia gave South Carolina a big scare yesterday. But South Carolina, of course, uh, you know, figures the whole thing out. But uh, we're right there in the top half of the league and a chance for us to finish in the top four. Just need a little help along the way. You know, r- real quick here looking at Ole Miss's schedule because that's who we're chasing. You know, we've got to take care of Alabama too. But uh, Georgia's at Ole Miss. You like Georgia there. Ole Miss going to Missouri. You like Ole Miss there? That's, I'm kidding. George- Ole Miss got killed Georgia. Uh, and then uh, – Ole Miss has to go to Kentucky. It's always a little bit weird. And then Arkansas goes to uh, to Ole Miss. But, you know, I, I think when you look at this, you feel like that Ole Miss should win all four of those games. And, again, that weird trip to Kentucky, you never know what's going to happen despite the records. And, um, you know, it's just like the Texas A&M game. You know, you, you didn't expect Texas A&M to be able to march into Oxford to win that game. But uh, we're going to need some help along the way. Probably going to need somebody to upset Ole Miss in order for us to finish in the top four. Uh, for the women's tournament. Uh, But that's where things sit right now and uh, excited about, you know, what is to come. We're we're starting to get to a very exciting type of year and Mississippi State's going to be in the postseason. Now, on the men's side, still got some work to do, of course, to make the tournament. And again, those final few games just absolutely, absolutely uh, concern you. And real quick, let's look at the standings uh, on the men's side. All that's... There's just so much to keep up with right now. And, um, you know, the men's and women's teams, of course, uh, looking to close it out and going to need your help to do so. Alabama leads the conference with 10 and 2 record. Tennessee, a game back at 9 and 3. And then there's South Carolina and Auburn just kind of bunched up together. And, of course, Auburn destroyed South Carolina last week. Florida's 8 and 4. Kentucky 8 and 4 right there with them. Kentucky, would we, we, we call Kentucky a bit of a disappointment at this point? I, I think we would. Ole Miss 6 and 6, Mississippi State 6 and 6, AM 6 and 6, all right there together. So again, we've kind of moved up to the middle of the pack and a chance for us to finish the top half of the league. And again, you begin to look at the schedule here. We've got to win uh, these next few ball games, and none more important. And we'll, 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 we'll preview the Ole Miss game on Wednesday. But it's the most important game because it's the next game, but also, too, it's a game against a team that is similarly situated, kind of working for the same things. That, that's, that's everything, right? When, when you have teams around you, you can help the traffic clear yourself. And that's what we have to do. And I suspect that we're going to come out. I think it'll be a great crowd. I know that our students will be there. They're the lifeblood of the Coliseum and really all of our sporting venues. But we have to win this game Wednesday, period. And, again, we'll break it down. But then you go to LSU on Saturday. So it's a challenging week, rivalry game and then a road game in the SEC. And LSU has been a better team. You know they would be. And then, again, the final the final four ball games, it's tough, man. Kentucky comes here. Are we capable of beating Kentucky? Yes. When we played them, they looked to be a much more talented team than us. But you're also played on the road. We need a raucous environment. This game's going to be on, on ESPN. Then you got to go to Auburn. That's going to be tough. Then to College Station. Again, that's a team right there kind of similarly situated. That's going to bowl down to, you know, really who can make the plays. And then South Carolina comes here, and I'm not ready to write that game off. I'm not. But some good things are happening. And, um, again, maybe we're a game or two behind where we plan to be or hope to be. But we're playing meaningful basketball. And uh, we have been outstanding at home, of course, 10-2 and two at home. One of those losses is to Southern. If we can pick up a road win down the stretch and protect the home court, you put yourself in a great position. But we got to get 20 wins. I think 20 wins, 
I think you feel really good about the way things are trending. But uh, we certainly need uh, the fan support to be there because it, oftentimes that's the difference in a late ball game. We see it all the time. The home court, home field advantage is absolutely phenomenal for everybody. All right, the last few minutes we have together, a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, a lot of questions about Logan Kohler. What's his availability? Well, it's a shoulder separation deal. And I haven't confirmed this, but I had somebody tell me he has dealt with this before. Uh, but we, we do, it's not expected to be a long term thing. But you got to think about that shoulder. I mean, there's a lot that goes on with your shoulder in baseball, right? It's true, whether it's throwing, catching, swinging, there's a lot that can be done to aggravate that type of injury. So they're going to be really careful with him. But we again, it's not a season-ending type thing. It was very scary when it happened. And when it first happened, I thought, oh, my gosh. It was like, oh, oh here we go. And we spent all this time and effort trying to find a third baseman. And uh, we get him. And then the very first weekend, he's on the shelf. It's, it, it's tough. I mean, it really is. Uh, but I think Nate Chester's done a good job. Nate's not the offensive player that Logan is. Just kind of call it for what it is. Even though Nate gave us some quality at bats over the weekend, uh, one of the reasons we got Logan's because he is a corner infielder that can have some pop in the bat. So we want to get him back sooner rather than later. Uh, same is kind of the case for David Mershon. Dave is a, uh, a young guy, obviously, that uh, is very talented. He is a fan favorite and just pulled up in one of the final scrimmages of the spring between second and third. And uh, it is a hamstring issue. He had a hamstring issue last year that kept him out of the lineup for a long time. Lamona says it's not nearly as severe this time. It doesn't appear to be. I mean, you never know how people are going to respond to treatment. But we don't expect that to be long term. I know many of you – I get a lot of messages, and I try to return them, but it's difficult. So let's just kind of address all that here. So – You know, we're down two positional starters right now, which makes the weekend look that much better in hindsight. Our guys, we have some depth on this team. They're they're able to kind of come back and compete in uh, Dylan Cup. I've told you guys now since the moment that he got on campus what an elite defender he is, and you guys are already beginning to see that. He makes everything out there look so easy. Like one of his first chances, uh, we made an error on the receiving end over at first. Just didn't catch a baseball. And the bat is probably a little bit farther ahead than what people told me. I think you saw the kid has some plate discipline. Hadn't got that big first hit yet, but he will. And uh, had a chance to speak with him briefly after the ball game yesterday. A lot of, lot of enthusiasm with that guy. This is a guy that's going to be a fan fav- favorite. Just go ahead and get ready. You're going to love him. You do, and uh, he's got that typical travel baseball haircut, drives the big uh, Chevy pickup truck with the personalized plate and all that kind of stuff. This kid is a star in the making, and every every rep that he gets on the college level will only benefit him and Mississippi State baseball as we move forward. But the good thing is when Mershon goes down, at least we have somebody capable. Again, he's not the offensive player that Mershon is, at least not yet. Uh, but this is a guy that's only going to get bigger, faster, stronger. Really excited about him, uh, to say the least. People have asked about Bradley Lofton. Uh, Coach shared something that we had been hearing for some time. He's been dealing with some tendonitis. Uh, Bradley Lofton is an absolute dude. And you guys have not really seen a healthy Bradley Lofton yet. You know, He had some issues last year, of course, with control. And some of that, we believe, was kind of related uh, to the procedure he needed to have that ended his season to kind of clean some things up. We do expect him to be a big part of things, okay? And, and it's just going to take some time. Uh, probably going to start out in the midweek, you know, to kind of get him rolling and get him healthy. And then, you know, he could be a guy that maybe gives you some options down the stretch on the weekends, you know, whether it be in a starting capacity or perhaps working along relief. Uh, Carson Ligon did pitch a little for us over the weekend. That's another guy they've been careful with because of the fact that he had some issues late last year just with some tightness. You know, it, it, it proved not to be anything serious. It required surgery. But that's the guy that's going to be able to help us too. You know, and, and he still needs that that out pitch. He does. I talked to some scouts that absolutely love his game, but they said, hey, they were eager to see what Justin Parker's going to do with him. Uh, Stone Simmons, you know, poor Stone. You know, we, we haven't had him since that two-lane weekend. You know, two years ago, and uh, was really good for us in the spring, uh, certainly in the fall, not quite 100%. He just, and as they say, he's just working through it. 
And typically what that means when you hear Lamonis or anybody on staff say, well, he's working through it, just means that they're just kind of working to get healthy. Uh, we do expect Stone to be a guy for us, and we don't expect it to be anything long term. So everything you have right now, everything you're dealing with, it's just guys are a little bit nicked up and the staff is being careful. And one of the things that I go back to is Pico. Now, we know Pico is going to be a guy, too, that's going to be probably be a long-term reliever for us on the left-handed side. You know, but when Pico last year, there were so many people last year that had so many things to say about Pico and didn't know anything about the situation. And I talked to some people very close to the situation that are not part of the Mississippi State program, and I'll leave it at that, that shared with me that your staff could not have been better to Pico that every step of the way the family was involved in everything and the decision-making process, uh, but we do expect Pico to be a guy for us and uh, eager to see him back on the mound at Dirty Noble Field. And so we don't have anything right now that we foresee being a long-term injury-type situation. And I know every one of you, you're like me, anytime that a guy's not around or he's not pitching, all of a sudden, you know, we get concerned. Our anxiety gets elevated because we want to win and we're tired of losing. We're tired of losing. And, again, we, we won over the weekend. But one of the things that I want to say about that, one of the things that disappointed me, and, yes, we made some mistakes. We did. We had some base running blunders. We, we stuck with Holcomb probably a hitter but too long. But we lose the ball game by one run. And there were so many people ahead of the weekend that were already beginning to forecast failure. Saying, oh, it's going to be a tough weekend. Air Force is a tournament team. I don't know that I agree with that. They're, they're going to be a team fighting to get in a regional somewhere. And I think after seeing them in person, especially if they can clean up a couple things defensively on the infield, I think they're a team capable of really challenging for the Mountain West Conference. They expect San Jose State to win that league, and they probably will. But Air Force could be an at-large bid. But it's interesting, the same people that were forecasting us to lose the series are now – downgrading Air Force. So you were praising them last week, but now you're downgrading them. So so which is it? How am I supposed to take you seriously? You told me last week that Air Force was a tournament team that would come in here and likely win the series. And then they don't, and then we're like, oh, they're terrible. Well, how credible are you? So were you wrong then or you're wrong now? I, I'm going to stick to the fact that we won the series and, again, we were a pitch away from sweeping a series. And it was so great. I remember turning to Mike Nemeth on Saturday uh, when Brooks Auger up there was competing his tail off. And I said, this is what I've missed. This is what I've missed. The, the crowd standing to their feet with the rhythmic applause were waiting to close out a ball game. It didn't go our way. But those are the moments that make us better long term, for sure. And it's good to see Brooks out there. And had a chance to see his family over the weekend at breakfast to see Brooks. And uh, I'm a fan. And uh, this is a young man that has wanted to be a part of your program and uh, has worked very hard to come back, and, and he is going to be better for the experience for sure. But all of that understood, there's all of these people, and there's it's a small segment, they're a very, very vocal minority, and this is going to hurt some people's feelings, and I don't care because I love all of you, but some of y'all make my head hurt. It's true. We lose the Saturday game, and all of a sudden I start getting these texts and these messages, and you know, people are like, all right, well, that's it. That's it. That's strike one. You know, How long are we going to do this? Are we going to fire him in midseason? Why are we already thinking that way? Everybody understands what's at stake here. Chris Simonis understands what's at stake. Zach Selman understands. we got to win ball games. Simple as that. But we didn't get beat 17-2. to two. We didn't get beat 18 to 2, we're 13 to 4. We got beat in a one run ball game. And when you begin to think about all the miscues that we had, we should have won the game. I mean, if one thing goes our way in that ball game, we win the game. So you lose a one run ball game, and we're all ready to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And so I start thinking about stacking up wins here. Right, And, of course, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to hold their breath until we get into conference play, and that's fair. Everybody, every team in the country has got an ace, okay? So we're going to see, even in a non-conference, we're going to see everybody's best effort because beating an SEC team is big. And that Georgia Southern Series, I think, is going to be very important. 
But let, you know, when you begin to think about this weekend, you got to be able to take care of business. And we remember last year we had that just absolutely inexplicable loss to UL Monroe. You need to take care of these two games with Austin P. And all of a sudden you're four and one heading to the weekend. And uh, we'll have a preview of Austin P. Over at jeanspage.com in the morning, and uh, kind of get you guys prepared. It's one of the things that we're going to do. We, we hadn't always done that, but we're going to do our best to, to preview the non-conference games, not just the weekend uh, series, just so you guys can be educated, right? Um, that's part of our job. We're here to educate and inform. But Georgia Southern, you know, uh, they played Maryland over the weekend, and they lost two out of three. And one of those games is really competitive, right? It was. But it wasn't a great weekend, for sure. And so this is a Georgia Southern team that's going to come over here with our friend Jared Banco. And, um, you know, they hosted a Power 5 opponent last week, and needed to get the Sunday game just to have anything to feel good about. They're going to play Georgia Tech Tuesday night. And Georgia Tech is always a pretty solid program. you know. So give them credit for kind of beefing up the schedule. And then they're going to come in here. And so we need you to be here. We absolutely do. We need you to be here to be a part of all of this and uh, to cheer for this, this program. But uh, let's just enjoy college baseball as best we can, right? Uh, that's the important aspect of every bit of this. You know, I start thinking about this. Let's say you pick up these midweek wins, and let's say you get two out of three on the weekend. You know, all, all of a sudden, you know, let's say you're six and two, you get Jackson State, you're seven and two when Mount St. Mary's comes into here. You know, so before we even head down to Pearl to play Southern Miss, you got a chance to stack some wins. So let's not just be holding our breath, just kind of waiting to pounce every time something doesn't go our way. Ron Polk made the statement famous, that's baseball. You know, there are a lot of people that love baseball that don't know baseball. It's true, and that's okay. It's perfectly okay. But we're not going to go undefeated. And, and again, you know, all of a sudden, first time through the order, if we haven't putting up three or four runs, all people are like, oh, I don't understand. I don't understand. Guys, it's not football. It's not like we're playing – you know, lining up and and, uh, and and playing a football game, you know, with, uh, you know, Jackie Sherrill or Mike Leach or Dan Mullen calling the plays. You know, hey, if we line up and play Air Force in football, we're probably going to have our hands full with that the triple option, right? But it's not like all of a sudden an FCS team shows up in football, we're supposed to have 28 points by the end of the first quarter so everybody can relax and leave at halftime. Baseball is a long game. A lot happens over the course of a game. Every matchup is important. Every pitch is important. That's one of the reasons that we love the game so much. That, in fact, that we've won a lot over the years, right? And so I feel good about this team. Matter of fact, I heard from a Major League Baseball scout this morning, had a chance to see the Bulldogs over the weekend, and uh, is very encouraged by our pitching staff. And it's like, how with all these dudes in this lineup, they're going to be good. Ran into another scout over the weekend. A guy that I've known for a long time, sat and visited him a little bit in the concourse before I went upstairs and covered the ball game. Really impressed with Cal Steven. And I think Cal Steven may have surprised some people, but what's he going to be with Justin Parker now kind of supervising his role? You know, again, he was the best pitcher on a bad team last year at Purdue, and now he's here, uh, the most amazing environment in all of college baseball, but also, too, with some people around him that can help him develop. And so uh, let's try to be optimistic. Well, I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to act and what ball games that you want to go to, but uh, you know, let's not go get out there and throw a temper tantrum on social media every time we lose a ball game. It'd be one thing if Air Force came in here and beat us 12 to one, or 18 to two, or 13 to four. I mean, those those are embarrassing scores, and we endured a lot of those last year. You know, people forget at times because I think we just tried to block it out from our memory. We were absolutely dreadful at times last year because we couldn't throw strikes. And then when we did, we got hit. We weren't deceptive enough on the mound. You got one of the best pitching coaches in the country. And, again, it's a small sample size. But I think the early returns, I think most people would say, you know what, hey, as a staff, we did really well. And you can kind of pick and choose and say, you know what, hey, we let we stay with the Holcomb a hit or too long. But how many other complaints can you make about the pitching staff? You can't. And you know what you've got offensively. And it's so tough. It's so tough when you're out there playing 35 degree weather. You know, it's not like Air Force not to cover off the baseball in that Saturday game either. You know, we just gifted them a couple runners when it mattered most. And then lo and behold, the bat finds the ball, finds some open space, they score a couple runs. 
That's baseball. It wasn't bad baseball. It was just simply baseball. Uh, also, we've uh, shared the uh, the cover of the new book, The Dude. That's out on social media now. And uh, getting ready to work through everything. And, uh, you know, we're writing the book kind of as we go. You know, I got a new business open, obviously. And we got the business of Gene's Page at Mississippi State. And there's all these things that go along with that. Uh, but, yeah, we'll have this book out for you probably in about six months. And uh, eager for you guys to read it. It's been a blast to write, but uh, it's always a big moment when we share the cover. So the cover is now public, and of course the book is called The Dude, and uh, it is book number seven for your good friend and host, and uh, you know, we got a five-year plan to get to ten, but uh, I don't know how long all this is going to last, and so I'm going to write as much as I can, as quickly as I can, and as interestingly as I can, and uh, we look forward to you guys buying it. Thanks so much for all of you that have kept When the Bottom Falls on the uh, Mississippi Bestsellers list. If you hadn't done so, go to whenthebottomfalls.com. You can order my newest book, number six, When the Bottom Falls, from that website. And all of my sports titles are available there as well. That's Flim Flam, Alpha Dog, Stark Villains, and Dog Pile. And every bulldog needs a copy of Dog Pile. Simple as that. You do. Whether you read or not, you need it just sitting in your condo or on your coffee table, on your bookshelf, because it's going to be one day you're going to want to go back and relive the amazing 2021 season. And uh, we, we've chronicled that for you. If you're looking for Stark Villains gear, you can find it at StarkVillains.com. Everybody needs a Stark Villains t-shirt, hoodie. You can get it in a variety of colors. I've shared before, if you live in the greater Starkville area and your kids go to Starkville Academy or Starkville High School or any of those uh, you know, schools as part of those systems, you can get them in your own school colors that are compliant with dress code. How about that? But until next time, let's all live our lives in a way we make more friends than enemies and people can see a difference in the way we live.